one invention has had a special role in vastly improving the submarine's underwater capability. This is sonar, the underwater eyes and ears of the submerged submarine, product of one of the most intensive development programs of the post-war years. With extensive training, long hours of practice, and perhaps a little imagination, the skillful sonar operator can learn the distinguishing characteristics of the sounds that fill the seas around him. I guess the most amazing thing about underwater sound is how much noise there is in the water. You know, sound has been known to travel as far as 3,000 nautical miles through the water, even more. Somebody once described the ocean depths as a huge, almost unexplored jungle with mountain ranges, canyons, populated with strange creatures, and with all kinds of noises racketing through it. Actually, the air in our atmosphere is a fluid, just like the sea. But the water is much more dense, so sound can travel further in water. Although you can't see them, there are several arrays of hydrophones on the outside of the submarine hull to pick up sound. Then the sonar equipment amplifies it so that we can hear it better, identify it, and tell where it's coming from. It's a funny thing, but after a while, you can almost see with your ears the things that are moving in the water around you. Whales. A whole school of them. I never realized there were so many whales in the ocean. That's a merchantman, probably an antique. She's probably giving it everything she's got and making about eight knots. There's a porpoise. Scientists believe they can actually talk to one another. The modern submariner. A new breed. Young. Technically oriented. Some train for as long as two years to the equivalent of a $20,000 education. But the submariner, certainly, is not just one man or type of man. There's much more to the story which should be told. The Navy, with nearly 200 years of superiority on the seas, is rich with history and tradition. The accomplishments of today are, of course, the result of yesterday's labor in the submarine service, just as anywhere else. I can remember when I was a little kid seeing movies of the USS Holland, first submarine ever commissioned by the US Navy. I remember my father said, you wouldn't be able to pay him enough to get him down in a thing like that. A man named John Holland built it and proved it really worked. They could even get a torpedo inside of it. From 1900 to 1914, 25 submersibles were accepted by the Navy. They carried only a handful of men, and cruising ranges were limited. But most people didn't really consider the submarine a serious military threat until the First World War. German U-boats proved that the submarine was a deadly killer and revolutionized naval warfare. America went to work after that. The L-boats, O, R, and the S-boats. But the big advance came in the World War II fleet-type submarine. She was 320 feet long, faster and had greater endurance than any other sub in the world. My first two subs were fleet types in the Pacific, where the submarine force piled up a record number of kills against enemy shipping. Well, we thought then that the fleet type was the last word. And of course, that was, let's see, 24 years ago. None of us could have realized then how incredible the changes in the next 20 years would be. The changes in submarining in the years since the Second World War have indeed been incredible. First, the snorkel. Then, nuclear power and revolutionary new hull designs. In general, as improvements were made, the hulls got larger and roomier and consideration was given to habitability during design and construction. It is not an oversimplification to say that the submariner's life, like anyone else's, 
is divided between eating, sleeping, and relaxing on the one hand, work on the other. It's just that his work is of a rather momentous nature, and a great deal of our future depends on how well he does it. Man Battle Stations Torpedo, Man Battle Stations Torpedo. It has been said that there is more science packed into a submarine per cubic inch than into any other warship. At no time does the full scientific and technological potential of the submarine come into play as it does during a fighting situation. Our submarine has been assigned to set up a designated zone of defense. This zone will be invaded by a submarine playing the role of a hostile intruder. Our mission? To discover his intrusion, pinpoint him, and simulate his destruction. Con Sonar, I have a contact on the ROADU bearing 120 Drawing right. At the call to battle stations, every job is taken over by the man best qualified to do it. The submarine comes to its peak fighting condition. At the con, the ship's commanding officer and his assistant approach officer. The diving officer, responsible for the submerged operation of the ship. Nearby, the fire control party. The fire control coordinator and three fire control system operators. Their responsibility to solve the mathematical problem of determining the relative positions of own ship and target, and put the torpedoes on the right track to hit the target. The plotting party, supervised by the plot coordinator. Information received from sonar is applied to different plotting techniques in a multiple attempt to get an accurate solution of the target's course, range, and speed. Below in the torpedo room, Weapon system personnel man their stations and prepare to ready the designated weapons for firing. The indicators on the weapon monitor panel keep the operator and the torpedo tube captains informed of the status of the entire fire control system and what is taking place above in the attack center. Con sonar, I now hold target bearing 125 in audible contact Evaluated as possible snorkeling submarine. Designated Sierra 10. Very well, Sonar. Send bearings every minute and report when you can hold them in ATF. Sonar I, contact Sierra 10, now bearing 127 and closing. Make ready, Mark 370 torpedoes in tubes 1 through 4. Aye, uh, sir. Two sword con, make ready for Mark 370 torpedoes in tubes 1 through 4. Con attack, Mark 370 torpedoes are loaded in tubes one through four. Con sonar, contact Sierra 10, bearing 129. Evaluated as definite snorkeling submarine. Am tracking in ATF. Very well, sonar. Get a turn count on the contact. Sonar I. Plot, we'll make an approach against contact Sierra 10, bearing 130. He is a snorkeling submarine. I intend to fire two Mark 370 torpedoes. The tactics of a submarine attack are divided into three phases. Contact, approach, and attack. The first phase is now complete. Already, we know quite a bit about our adversary. He is a diesel-electric powered boat, capable of running submerged on his batteries even more quietly than a nuclear sub but his batteries eventually run down. He has been forced to come to surface to suck in air through his snorkel, to run his diesel motors and charge his batteries. 